Here we go. Wiggins drives it. Harms. Good afternoon from College Park, where Maryland takes it over Purdue, 57 to 50. This is a big dog post-game show. I'm Wayne Viner, Bruce Posner, and Coach Dustin Clark. How you doing? Doing great, Wayne. Great to be back home. All right. So you enjoy yourself on the sideline there, yelling at the refs. Uh, you know, uh, I do. I, I love being back watching these guys play and supporting coach and the staff. And uh, yeah, I, I try not to yell at the refs too much. All right, well, Bruce, what'd you see today? Before the game, Dustin told me, don't worry, we got it handled. I, I thought they came out on fire. That was the key, Dustin, the one that. It was the key. The way they started this game, after the way that the game on Tuesday night at Wisconsin ended, was everything. I give coach and the staff a ton of credit. The guy, he had the guys ready to play. There was no hangover. The way they started the game was everything. Dustin, another another home win. I looked today at the top 25. Every top 25 team that was on the road was losing. What's going on? What is this home thing? Why? Why all of a sudden? It's never been this dominant. Yeah. I, I, I don't have an answer for it, but you're right. People are struggling to win on the road this year. And we, I mean, we always said it. We said, it, you know, it, it's hard to win on the road. And, um, you know, we've had some really good road teams here at Maryland. We've had some teams that hadn't been as good. Um, so I, I think it ebbs and it flows. But it, it's hard it's, it's, it's hard to win on the road in college basketball more than any other sport. 71 to 42, this team beat Michigan State right. on Sunday. And, and they come in here. And they were lucky to get to 50. Well, they were down 20 to 4. Maryland was on fire. Every shot that didn't go in for the past three games went in. But when it came down to winning time, there was an immediate timeout at 3.53 to go. Purdue's on the line, Stefanovic for three. He makes the three, makes it 53 to 50. And then you got to figure out if you really want to win this game. And the answer was yes. Purdue didn't score again. It was the Sticks. Yeah. Tell us about Sticks. You're a big man, coach. Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. us about yeah, Sticks. I mean, Sticks was great. That kid's a load. You know, it, that kid's got, I don't know how many pounds he's got on Sticks, but he's got plenty on him. And Sticks used his length, and Sticks rebounded the ball. Sticks affected shots. Mm -hmm. Sticks scored at the rim. And, uh, you know, I, you know, the, the, Maryland's defensive game plan was phenomenal. Purdue runs so many sets, and you can't prepare your team for all those sets. So what Maryland did defensively, they switched a lot of screens, and that's how you, and that takes Purdue out of their sets, and that's right. why Purdue had the slow start, right? And then you know, offensively, like I said, this team, this Maryland team, is built. Um, it, it's, it's built from the outside in. Last year's team with Bruno was built from the inside out, right? Mm -hmm. And so when Maryland scores from the perimeter like yep. they did, mm -hmm. all right, and when they shoot the ball like they're capable of, you're going to have first halves like we had tonight. Well, they certainly did, but you also, on those switch on every screen, you have Dante Scott at 6'7", guarding a guy who looked to be six feet tall, and he was able to stay with him. So it's not so much that they switch, it's that it works for Maryland. It they does. They actually can put a power forward on a point guard does, yeah. and still stop them. You're right. I think the key moment in the last, at the very end, Sticks was trailing the play. Harms ran down, he's set in the lane. Wiggins did not let the guard dump it down to wide open Harms. If they do that, it's 53-52. There was no pass. Sticks catches up to him, and I think he blocks the shot. Were you, Dustin, were you surprised 53-50, we had the ball under the basket. They did not press us. I was shocked. I mean, it was less than a minute left. They didn't press us, why? Yeah. After, I, after watching yeah, the game I think, Sunday? I think, um, I think because, um, you know, when you press, you get at a, a disadvantage, right? And I think I think Matt Painter probably had a lot of faith in his half-court defense, the way they were playing in the second half, and he didn't want to give a run-out layup. He wanted to get a stop and try to go down and score. Um, but, uh, you know, that's I, I guess that's probably hey, why I you know it. as well as I do, because you've been there too many times. At least we don't have to go to Purdue this year. Because that place is impossible. A hard place to play. Impossible. Well, so, uh, you feeling good when you leave here today about the team? Oh, absolutely. I felt good. I felt I felt great about the team after the Wisconsin game. I felt bad for the team. Okay, okay. Right. Wisconsin okay, was the hot. That. Wisconsin is the hottest team in the league. They're in second place by one game. Okay, and we did everything we had to do. All right, except for to Finish. close the game out to, to beat them on their home floor in a hard place to play. So I was I, I loved the offensive adjustments that coach and the staff made. I loved the way that the guys played. All right, and so I felt I'm like hey. If they can 
if, if, if they can if they can not have a hangover and take the positives from the Wisconsin game, I felt great about them. I felt bad for them. I got to tell you, even though I'm not on that sideline anymore, I couldn't sleep on Tuesday night because I just know, I mean, just how I felt as a fan, I know how they felt. And like I said, the best thing that happened today wasn't in-game adjustments, wasn't the three baskets. Turge got them out of timeouts. The best thing that happened today is that these guys were ready to play they from, were. from the jump, and the way they handled that loss to Wisconsin, I feel great about this team. When's the next game you're coming back for? Uh, I don't have it on the calendar yet, but I'm going to be here for I sure. know you'll be here for you know, Michigan State or Michigan. I'm gonna, I, One of them. One of them. I know you well yeah. enough. Y'all yeah. right. right. well, are the best, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thanks for being on. Thanks, That's man. Coach Dustin Thanks, Clark. Thanks. The Jacklers Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Back on the floor at Xfinity Center, 57-50, Maryland over the Boilermakers. It was an incredibly tough ending. It was an exhilarating start. I'm Wayne Viner. Bruce Bosner joining us now, Cordell Woodland. Cordell, you usually have a unique angle on this. What did you see? Man, it was started out as a game that I thought was going to be a blowout uh, by the second half, and we may get to see some Maryland guys play that we haven't seen play in a while. It turned out to a complete dogfight in the second half. Uh, Purdue clearly went into the halftime and made some adjustments to the way that they guarded Jalen on the pick and rolls and the pick and pops. He was no longer getting the open threes that he was getting in the first half and Good able to cut down. Definitely a big adjustment, and they started – uh, attacking the basket from the low block more uh, on the offensive end. So it took a while for Maryland to adjust, and we went from like almost a 20-point game turned into a six-point game with two minutes to go, and uh, Maryland somehow was able to fight their way back with a key late dunk by Jalen Smith. But, man, this is a game that um, if you're Maryland, you, you, you take the win, but you you got to find a way to put together a full 40 minutes. Dante Scott. Show great game. Why. Yeah, great He's, game. What's your take on that? Well, you know, the first half, I think he hit two threes and wound up with 13 right. points. He had an and one to open the game. Yeah. Listen, when you take a freshman and he goes on the road, he doesn't play like he does at home. And that's one of the reasons that there are so many home game wins. So many teams are freshmen somewhat dominated mm -hmm. and you saw it today mm -hmm. if Dante Scott plays either of the last two games yeah. like he did today Maryland wins but you can't expect yeah, it absolutely or uh, my favorite show Marial gets it for a few minutes doesn't do much yeah. What do you see with that? Uh, it's going to take a while for Cho to get adjusted. Uh, it didn't help that by the time he was able to play, it was towards the end of non-conference games, so he's pretty much getting thrown right into uh, the Big Ten games, and you just see he's a little bit outmatched physically. That I think that's the biggest thing he's got to catch up with, just the physical nature of the game. He's got the size, no question, but length it alone isn't going to do it. He's got to be able to stand his ground. Wayne, you talk about it a lot. I'm going to ask you, are you concerned with the beating that Sticks is taking every game? Is it going to catch up to him? I'm worried about it a little. The beating when you're, you're standing there in position and, and you're bump and grind is probably less of a beating than you see when Mello or Cowan used to drive down the middle like they were Barry Sanders, leap in the air and bounce off the floor. So I'm a little concerned because sticks is it I mean, if something happens i mean he goes from garza to the big guy from wisconsin yeah, yeah. to matt harms and williams but physically, I mean, how much can he take physically yeah I, I think defensively he likes this yeah it's offensively where he isn't as aggressive and even that's starting to be fixed you start to see him how many layups did he have today and you go none but he dunked it a few times and i go that's good yeah i don't want layups i want him to go ahead and dunk it 
and you can see that difference over the past few games. Even at the end of the game, they lost to Wisconsin. They went to him for a dunk twice. He got one. Wisconsin sniffed it out the second time. We do have to get inside for the press conferences. We have Matt Painter and Mark Turgeon, who, uh, depending on who you listen to, are the two best coaches of the league, other than who aren't named Tom Izzo. Right, right, for sure. And those adjustments, as uh, Dustin Clark pointed out, you know, one guy adjusts one way and you go on a big run, another guy comes back, yeah. changes things up, his team makes a run. Maybe they really are the two best coaches of the league. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at the game, Maryland wins, and I'll tell you why in my eyes, they wanted it a little bit more. They were better on the loose balls, they were better down the wire, but when you spot a team 17 points on the road and you try and make the comeback, 95% of the time you just come up short because you're so physically exhausted making the comeback that when you've got to make that big basket, it's just not there. And that's what happened today. And one basket for the home team can just reignite, can just take away after the, the dunk sticks got here. The, it was a, a f f three point game for a while. The dunk sticks got to make it five just completely. It only made it five points, but it completely basically took them out of the game yeah. because the building woke back up, Maryland woke back up, and now Purdue had to use a timeout. And that about does it. And that does it for us. And that did it for Purdue. So, we will see you after the Terps take on Iowa, which is a, a ways from now. Uh, we're on the road at Northwestern, on the road at Indiana. and Back and, on the 30th. And then back on the 30th. But please, catch Terp Talk on Wednesdays on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. You also have the, still have that Monday thing, don't you, at 8 a.m.? Yeah, 8 a.m. on uh, WNST. Uh, in the Nest continues uh, during the uh, non-Raven season. And... Uh, Carl Science is in the house with me. Wayne's often on the show, and uh, it's been uh, very, very good so far. And as we see Daryl Morsell's father walking by, Daryl's got to get over this. Uh, All right, he has the effort. And I'm sure his it'll show effort's on the always court. there, and uh, we need him to make any kind of a move. And that'll do it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Cordell. No problem.